This is Ether. Humanity's attempt to replicate the sun on Earth. A technology that could trump all others, providing limitless clean energy. A truly ambitious mega project, the world's largest nuclear fusion reactor ever built. A worldwide collaboration of 33 nations constructing one of the most complex machines in the world. Today, we'll take a deep dive into the south of France as we dissect the dynamics of ether. In a small town in the south of France, a team of no fewer than 2,000 engineers and scientists are working on something big, very big. The International Thermonuclear Experimental Reactor, or ITER, is an international collaboration of China, South Korea, the United States, India, Japan, the European Union, and Russia, coming together to develop the largest nuclear fusion reactor in the world. As a bit of a side note, I want to explain briefly the difference between nuclear fusion and fission. In a nutshell, nuclear fusion reactors work by fusing together two hydrogen atoms, a deuterium and a tritium atom. When they fuse together, they produce helium and a neutron. This process releases enormous amounts of energy. Now, in nuclear fission reactors, we split atoms, most commonly uranium which in turn releases a chain reaction and radiation, which is why we associate radioactivity with fission. The radiation releases energy, which is transferred to a working fluid, water most commonly, which powers a steam turbine. Now, back to ether. You see, for quite some time, humanity has had a deep fascination with nuclear energy. Since the early 1900s, research on nuclear energy has been constantly being conducted and there are undoubtedly many benefits to this technology. For one, unlike nuclear fission reactions, there is no radioactive waste. It is a clean, renewable and extremely powerful source of energy. ITER in particular aims to achieve five main outcomes. A sustainable deuterium tritium plasma where the conditions are sustained by internal fusion heating. By the way, in the coming weeks, I'll be doing an exciting video explaining and simplifying the physics behind nuclear fusion. So hit the subscribe button to never have to miss a video. Anyway, so the main goal is to prove that nuclear fusion in a contained environment is actually possible. The second goal is to generate 500 megawatts of fusion power output from a 50 megawatt heating power input. So achieving a tenfold or 10 times the input power put into the reactor. It will also demonstrate the operation of a full scale fusion power plant, the feasibility of producing tritium required for future power plants, and lastly, demonstrate safety characteristics of future plants. From these footages, you can see the massive scale of ether. It's quite literally enormous. But contrary to what your girlfriend tells you, size does matter, at least in fusion reactors. You see, the larger the reactor, the more efficient it will be, resulting in fewer heat losses. So naturally, we aim to achieve the largest reactor possible. And that's what the member countries are trying to achieve. However, as we all know, these collaborations don't always run smoothly. Way back in 2006, it was officially showtime for ITER, with an initial budget of 5 billion euros, that's around 3.6 billion dollars for you Americans. With a 10 year plan, the member nations expected ITER to come online by 2016. However, nine years past the planned deadline and ITER is still years behind its completion date. Last summer, in 2024, yet another delay of eight years to reach the first stage of completion was announced. 
and that initial budget of 5 billion euros has ballooned to over 22 billion euros. But why so many setbacks? An early setback was attributed to the integrity of thermal shields manufactured by a contractor. These are used to maintain liquid helium's temperature and protect the walls of the tokamak. Although upon installation, the shields corroded because of a chemical reaction with a cleaning acid, which meant that about 20 kilometers of piping had to be removed, refabricated and reinstalled. Then along came COVID-19, which caused massive delays in component manufacture, supply chain, quality control and overall workflow of ITER. Another problem were the massive sections of the tokamak made in South Korea. These were found to be defective as they wouldn't fit perfectly together with slight imperfections creating microscopic gaps. Concerns arose about potential leaks through these gaps leading to the French Nuclear Safety Authority halting the project entirely back in 2022. Other mechanical issues such as weld integrity by contractors have led to more delays and spiraling costs along the years. The big question though, should we still be investing in ether? Well, let me make that simple for you. Yes, definitely. Nuclear fusion is the best chance that humanity has for a sustainable future. Setbacks, delays and cost overruns are expected in a project of this scale and being the first of its kind, a lot of plans change when going from the drawing board to real life. All technological advancements come with their unique set of challenges, but these contribute to research and innovation within the nuclear community. I believe that ITER is a long-term investment in humanity's future, and that's why it's important to dive deep into these problems, not believing everything the media says. That's exactly what I explain in this video, which I highly recommend you watch next. Anyway guys, see you next week, thank you for watching, bye!